Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I wanted to shoot a quick video and show you guys some boas that I added to my collection recently. This represents both a locality boa type as well as a type of morph boa. And both of these I had been looking for for quite some time, but I just couldn't seem to find the right animals. And I'm really super happy with these animals so far and lucky to have found them. First up, this is my new morph boa. And as you may have guessed, this is a moon glow, which if you're not familiar with, is a three gene combination. So this animal is both amelanistic, the call albino amelanism gene, as well as anerythristic and hypomelanistic. So the three genes together combine to make this animal that's mostly pure white. But what's really cool is that the markings on the animal, the saddle markings are still visible which are kind of this cool, translucent, uh, almost you know silvery pinkish color. Just a really cool looking animal. So this is kind of like a snow boa, which has the hypo as well. And when you add in the hypo to the mix, it makes the white a little bit more pure white. And it's, it also makes the animal age a little bit better, so it doesn't get quite as yellow with time. But I'm really looking forward to watching this animal grow. I've been, as I had mentioned, I've been looking for a moon glow for quite a while, actually the last few years. And a few years ago, the moon glow seemed to be uh, not that hard to find in the six to $700 range. But recently they've really shot up in value and it's hard to find one for under like $1,000. So it just shows you that not all morph boas will go down in value. Some of them go down to a point uh, where they reach a level that's sustained by the market and then they'll come back up in, in, in price as the supply is not as great as the demand. And with a boa that's this cool and beautiful looking as the moon glow, there's definitely a high demand for these. They're you know, relatively hard to produce because they've got three genes, you know, two homozygous recessive genes and then the one incomplete dominant hypomelanistic. So genetically it's a little more complicated to produce. So. I believe that the uh, value and the prices of these guys should say high. But I'm really looking forward to watching this one grow up. Uh, they're really cool, you know, nothing like seeing a boa that's almost pure white like this moon glow boa. I was also able to acquire a small group of a locality I've been looking into for quite a while, and that's the Branchia Columbia boa. And so my good friend Michael Beach recently had a litter of these beauties and I was able to get two females and a male. So this is one of the females. And these boas are just really breathtaking. You know, just among the most beautiful boas I've ever seen. Uh, just gorgeous colors, uh, you know, great, great contrast, beautiful markings. I love the symmetry of the markings and the pattern down their back, kind of like a circle pattern. And then this beautiful kind of orangish red tail. These guys are technically Boa Imperator. They come from uh, Barranquilla, is from nor in northern Colombia on the Caribbean coast. Uh, so technically they're not a true red tail boa. They're not a boa constrictor constrictor. Uh, but I think it's kind of ridiculous because you can see how red the tail is. So if someone calls this a red tail, I mean, to me, it's a red tail. Maybe it's not a true red tail if you really want to get technical. But this animal is, is every bit as beautiful as any of my two red tails from Peru, Suriname, Guyana, or anywhere else. I just love these animals. And so, as I said, this is the female that has kind of a little bit more color and just a beautiful looking animal. This is my other female, Branchia columbia boa, and she just has an amazing pattern. I mean, look at the pattern on this animal. Just absolutely gorgeous. Such high contrast and such beautiful saddle shape. Uh, just a really breathtaking animal. You can see the kind of reddish maroonish brown tail. But these are just beautiful animals as I've said. You know I think they're just as nice as any true red tail. And I really look forward to raising these up. One of the cool things about these animals is supposedly they don't get really that big. Maybe four to six feet. So I would say that they're in the range of a semi-dwarf boa in case you're looking for one that's not quite as large. Um, but just a gorgeous, gorgeous animal, the Branchia columbia boa. Finally, this is the male Branchia columbia boa. 
So these animals were born in May and so they're a few months old now. And just as I mentioned, just thrilled with these Barranquilla Columbia boas. Uh, really looking forward to watching them grow. These are from the uh, Rio Bravo bloodline. And they're what the pure Colombian uh, boa imperator look like. A lot of the normal boas that you see on the market now have a lot of Colombian ancestry, but they're also mixed with other localities. So you can't really be sure where they're from. But the pure Barranquilla Colombia boas are definitely breathtaking to look at. And I'm looking forward to raising these guys up. So, as I mentioned, I've been looking for some Barranquilla boas for a while, as well as that Moonglow boa. And at this point, my collection is pretty near complete. So I'm probably not going to be able to acquire any more boas, at least for quite some time. Uh, but I'm thrilled and, you know, I feel like I have a really good uh, collection of locality boas um, and looking forward to the babies that I'm going to be able to produce in the years ahead. And the Branchia is certainly a really nice final locality to add to the collection. So I hope this was helpful for you. As always, if you have any questions, just shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.